Hello and welcome to tonight's uh, SBC News. The five suspects in the case of uh, importation and possession of arms and ammunition have been charged. The five persons are Mukesh and Laura Valabji, Leslie Benoiton, Frec Marie and Leopold Payette. They have all been remanded for 14 days. They will be back in court on the 25th of this month. The five accused, businessmen Mukesh Valabji and wife, lawyer Laura Valabji, Leslie Benoiton, a high-ranking army officer, former brigadier Leopold Payette, and Frank Marie, former high-ranking SPDF official who was also in charge of former President René's presidential bodyguards, have been remanded for a further 14 days and will be back in court on the 25th of this month. The lawyer of 81-year-old Frank Marie had argued for his client to be released on bail as he was only following orders. However, Chief Justice Ronnie Govindan accepted the prosecution lawyer's arguments that there are substantial risks that, if released on bail, he will interfere with witnesses and tamper with evidence, as there is a significant number of arms and explosives imported into the country that is still unaccounted for. He rejected the bail application. Until now, search operations at the Valabji's residence and Bunaton's residence and workplace, the police have seized 94 firearms and 38,490 rounds of ammunition. Most of them were at the Valabji's residence. Meanwhile, the prosecution is still awaiting the arrival of a foreign explosive experts to help in delicate search operation at the Valabji's residence. President Wevel Ramkalawan has said that even if Seychelles is a small island state, it is always engaged in the protection and preservation of our planet. He said that it is for this reason that one-third of Seychelles ocean territory is a marine protected area. President Ramkalawan was addressing the One Planet Summit dedicated to the ocean, which is being held in Brest in France. This One Ocean Summit is being held as part of the French presidency of the Council of the European Union and with the backing of the United Nations. The goal of the One Ocean Summit is to raise the level of ambition of the European and international community on maritime issues and to convert our shared responsibility for the ocean into concrete action. President Ramkalawan was amongst several heads of state who addressed this forum this afternoon. And the Minister for to Foreign Affairs and Tourism, Sylvain Stradogon, has said that long gone are the days when tourism might have been viewed as a standalone entity, obvious to other economic activities and to the need for balanced, synergistic integration with other economic sectors and with the dynamics of the fast-changing world in which we now live. Minister Radogon was addressing a workshop based on sustainable tourism in the blue economy for the One Ocean Summit in Brest, France. Minister Radogon said that the blue economy bottom line is to find the correct balance between conservation and socio-economic development. Ours, he said, is both a fragile economy and an equally fragile environment, neither of which can withstand under or over-exploitation of resources. The Minister for Education, Dr. Justin Valentin, is generally satisfied with the results of international examinations. He said that students who registered for IGCSE exams performed beyond the ministry's expectation given the COVID-19 pandemic that interrupted learning over the past two years. He was giving his reaction during a press conference where the assessment of exam results for P6, S5 and A-level was revealed. He said that those results are proof that the ministry is progressively achieving its target. Our plan toward raising aspiration and ensuring worthwhile learning outcome is progressing in the right direction. The message is reaching all the targeted groups and all of us within the Ministry of Education are most delighted. However, we equally feel that we have a long way to go. Our next phase of analysis will entail finding out how best to get all schools to perform well. Moreover, we have this long overdue conversation 
about school curriculum contents, which we need to start. We have spoken mainly today about achieving the goals of students who are mainly academically oriented. We want all our students to be part of the attainment discourses. Education in Seychelles must be transformed to allow students of all backgrounds and ability the opportunity to shine and achieve important education goals. Emphasis will be placed on non-academic skills so that all good performers see themselves in this new academic landscape that we are creating. I am therefore inviting all institutions to get their achievements ready so that we will start presenting, presenting them, of course, to the general public. Seychelles continues to register steady decline in the number of uh, COVID-19 cases and a corresponding drop in admissions. However, young children represent a high proportion of new infections and there has been an increase in deaths, especially among uh, older persons. Uh, in keeping with the decline in transmission, the Public Health Authority has announced changes to the public health and social measures. With effect from today, 11th February, opening hours of shop has been extended from 7 to 9 p.m. Conditions of sales of alcohol and other measures required by SLA and PHA remains in place. All sports, including team sports, may resume normal practice and competitions. All participants must follow the venue and federation or association SOPs in place. Meeting, seminars and workshops may be conducted within the conditions, including the number of participants defined in the approved venues SOPs. The Public Health Authority says, however, people must be conscious that there are still vulnerable groups in society who still need protection. Vaccination remains an important part of the protection and those who have not been vaccinated or received their third dose booster should get vaccinated without delay. While measures are being relaxed progressively, everyone must remain conscious of the need to protect each other by applying all preventive measures like maintaining social distancing and wearing of masks. Review of other measures in place is ongoing and any changes will be announced in the coming weeks. The contact group on piracy off the coast of Somalia will be addressing other illegal activities happening at sea instead of focusing only on piracy. The contact group met on the 27th of January to discuss on the next stage of their work since there have been almost no reports of piracy activities in the region. The Director General of the Regional Affairs Division at the, the Foreign Affairs, Steve Lalland, says that there are different decisions that were taken during the meeting. We decided that, uh, first of all, there's a change of orientation from piracy to other maritime crimes, such as drug trafficking, such as uh, human trafficking, uh, are you fishing, illegal fishing, uh, dumping of waste in the oceans. So uh, that was accepted. Uh, then uh, we decided that uh, we need a change of geographical orientation, which was also accepted from off the coast of Somalia to Western Indian Ocean. Uh, also, we decided a change of name from contact group on piracy of the coast of Somalia to uh, contact group on uh, illicit uh, maritime activities in the Western Indian Ocean. It's important for Seychelles because we are a country where we have a large EZ. Uh, our land area is small, but our ocean area is, is, is quite large. So we are concerned uh, as a country and also uh, the, our location, we are right in the middle of the uh, Indian Ocean, Western Indian Ocean, and our uh, borders are maritime borders. So there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of activities happening around us that we need to, to address. And because we, have, we don't have enough resources, so uh, therefore, uh, we, we need the international community to, to engage and, and uh, assist this region.